<laughs> All right, well, welcome back from the break. We've got three fantastic presentations from the operators. Our first one is The Future is Here, an end-to-end -end OSDU native workflow with trusted well data. Our presenters are Jacob Jackson of ExxonMobil, Peter Gonzalez of Petrolink, and Kay Sutter of EPAM. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming here to Edinburgh and uh, for taking the time to come and listen to our presentation. There's really a lot of you out there and more people coming in. We really appreciate, uh, we really appreciate the, the, uh, the time that you are, that you're, and the interest that you're giving to us for coming here and hearing our talk. Um, I'll introduce myself really quick. Uh, I am Jacob Jackson with ExxonMobil, and I am the subsurface data lead for the Guyana business unit. So the main conventional deep water business unit for ExxonMobil. And uh, we have decided to adopt OSDU, so we're gonna tell you a little bit uh, about how that we are doing that. And I'll let these guys introduce themselves. Um, right. Go ahead, Peter. I'm Peter Gonzalez with Petrolink. I'm the chief strategy officer. I uh, got introduced to OSDU in 2019 when I joined Energistics, but have maintained, uh, committed to the standards as I've come in and out to different uh, organizations. And I'm so glad to be here to share a workflow with you guys. And I'm Kay Setter with EPAM and have been in the data management practice and part of OSDU for several years now. Um, and around the industry for far longer than I like to admit. So. All right, so we're gonna tell you a little bit about how that we've worked together to, uh, to convert this uh, workflow from um, something that was really Excel-based and email-based to OSDU native, and how we're uh, working on operationalizing it right now. So first, a little bit about the business value. Why is ExxonMobil interested in this? Why is Guyana interested in this? And you know, it really comes down to inefficiencies and uh, issues uh, surrounding trust in the data. And I think you know, if, you were in, um, if you were in Houston, then you saw the poll that we gave last time, how, how much time do users spend on finding and establishing trust in the data that they need to do their jobs? And I think you know, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, that's why we're all here. It's a lot of time. It's a significant amount of time that users spend you know, looking for the data. Does it exist? Where is it? Who was the last person to use it? What did they do with it? Do I trust that person? Do I trust you know, where they stored it? Is there a newer version? I don't know. Looking for PowerPoints to document and to understand the data and so forth. And so in order to solve this, our vision is to radically modernize subsurface data and our workflows in order to get business value and not just efficiencies, but also increased insights, um, new insights and new ways of working that will help us to meet the challenges um, as, as we go ahead. And so we see OSDU as being a really important part of that. It's a data platform. It's not just another data silo. It's not just another application to put data in. It's a full-fledged, full-featured platform for liberated data that is application agnostic, that vendor agnostic, company agnostic, and it's very, very data-centered. And um, also, we're trying to make, help it to become more workflow-centered. Obviously, it uh, has lineage in order to help understand the data, how you got here, where you're going, why you're here, and uh, so you can make decisions about where to go forward. Technical assurance is a big thing. I'll talk a little bit more at the end of this talk. And, uh, and many of you know that we're really focused on trusted data, if you heard Maribel talk about that earlier. And so technical assurance, why, when, you know, and how should I be using these data, who should be using it, is really, really important, because those are the questions that uh, users ask all of the time. And then, um, of course, any other metadata that need to go with the data, they, OSDU has a place for it, or because it's open source and we can influence it, we can actually work in the forum to make sure that it meets the business needs in every way um, that's necessary. And it's also extensible, so if there is something proprietary we need, we can add it um, as a custom schema as well. So OSDU is really, really an important piece of this. And finally, all of it leads to business decisions. How did we use the data? 
what were the reasons that we used the data, who said we could use the data, and what are the decisions that we made um, on top of that. So OSDU enables all of these, and all of these, um, all of these efficiencies for the business that we didn't really have before, or we were really struggling with capturing all these things in email, PowerPoints, and so on and so forth. So a little bit about what we're doing. So I'm gonna throw this up here. This is not intended to be an architecture diagram, so don't, uh, you know, don't, don't read too much into this. It's just a high-level kind of process for how we, um, how we manage well data. In particular here, I'm showing um, well header data. This is, this is what I'm trying to show here. So today, well header information can come from internal sources, external sources. It can come from uh, lots of different places, other companies, partners, governments, so on and so forth. And so we blend it together with the machine learning process to create those golden records um, based on the business rules that we have and the survivorship rules. And then finally, we can uh, put that into OSDU as trusted well header data. So the well headers that we have in OSDU are all trusted. We're beginning with a known, and we know how they got there. We know why they're there. And anything that we hang on that then also has the advantage um, through lineage and, and uh, so forth as being trusted as well. So what we'd like to see then is everything and everyone who consumes the data is consuming that trusted data directly. They do whatever they need to do, and if they need to put something back, they put it back and it's also trusted. This is kind of the future state. This is what we expect OSDU to be able to do for us in the future. But unfortunately, it's not quite that pretty today. Today, yes, you can get at those data, but you have to sometimes go through intermediaries and you lose some of this context. Maybe you need to export it into a known format, import it into the traditional uh, software that you were using before, and then go through that process to put it back in OSDU. You lose the lineage, you lose a little bit of the trust that you have, and you really haven't moved forward. You've just changed it from a last file, for example, on the LAN, to now something in OSDU that you have to build a connector in order to do. So we're trying to, uh, so what we're gonna show you a little bit later is that we've taken all of that out and we're using, um, for this particular workflow, we're using the data directly in OSDU and uh, getting the value that we needed to. So why did we choose this workflow? The workflow that we're gonna talk about today is actually formation pressure. And um, we identified that as an, a, a significant opportunity for, to get value out of trusted data and to streamline a workflow that's pretty complicated. So let me give you an idea. And again, I'm not telling you anything that you know today or that, that you guys um, don't already know. So I just showed a picture of how we might master well header data or really any other data, uh, depending on your workflow. But how do we master these formation pressure data today? Well, we have a master Excel sheet and all of the data that's been QC'd and looked at by the petrophysicists and the operations geologists, they can then will fill out this master data, this master Excel sheet with the new data as they come in. And so we have this master sheet that sits out there in a place where everyone can see it. Not everyone can edit it because it is the master, the golden records, if you will but everyone can see it and everyone can use it and they can use it to, 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 do their, to, to do whatever they need for their particular workflow. And everyone uses this in the business unit, all the geoscientists, all the engineers, at some point they wanna know um, what were the pressures in this reservoir, how does it matter, is there depletion, excess pressures, so on and so forth. And so what we end up doing though is, um, while there is this one master spreadsheet, it turns out there's not just one master spreadsheet. Because in order for someone to, to then do anything with the data, they make their own copy of the master spreadsheet. So with 300 something practitioners in the Guyana business unit, and at any given moment, at least dozens of them are probably interested in these data, they all start making copies, they put it in their personal folders or on their desktop or whatever. And now we have what amounts to um, a bunch of copies of the master spreadsheet. But then, you know, tomorrow is another day and we drill more wells and so we do it all again. And so this is the problem that we're trying to solve is instead of having literally thousands of these spreadsheets on the LAN, 
We want everyone using the same thing, but it also needs to be functional enough that they can do their jobs. So um, the practitioners can do their jobs and, uh, and everyone can use the same data. So that's the story that we're gonna tell you and I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to these guys to keep, um, to fill in the rest of the story. All right, thanks Jacob. Can you, I'll kind of come on this side and yep. advance the slide. So we're gonna cover the delivery of the data, delivering the data. So the data is, uh, in this case, as Jacob mentioned, files and the, the workflow to get that data into OSDU. And um, the process in, in this case is the data coming from the field and information pressure tests and all the supporting data that goes with that. It's not just one spreadsheet, it's spreadsheet, LES files, um, uh, PDFs, images, anything that associates to make the, uh, help the geologist and the petrophysicist come up with that master's uh, sheet. So what we use is a PetroVault, one of the technologies we have where we get data in either static or more dynamic if it's coming in from real time. But the instance is that data comes into a, what we call the bus station. It stops at a spot, it gets a chance to be looked at and monitored, and then it gives us the capability to do this thing. So when data comes in from, um, which is file agnostic and capabilities to be able to take on the different types of data, which works for this workflow, um, yet notification that there's new data. The geologist or the petrophysicist can take that information when they get notified, start working on the, sh on the spreadsheet, build that spreadsheet up, and then once they, um, I'll give them the next slide here so you can kind of see where that data landed. So here's an example of that. This is the web interface to uh, digital well file, the part where the static data lands. So you know, all the MWD data coming in, getting those uh, files in different formats, but essentially, once you curated the spreadsheet to what you wanted to get that trusted data, you can then stage it and put it in another folder, which is a staging folder, or tag the, the file to be uh, ingested into OSDU. So kind of an idea of what the spreadsheets look like. Um, everybody has a different format, different flavor, but essentially the data is there. The intent is to parse the data um, and then put it into a uh, the content schema file uh, and then load that up into OSDU. So there has already been uh, the creation of the formation pressure test uh, content schema so that data can uh, be parsed from the Excel spreadsheets into the schema and then loaded up into the Wellboard DDMS. And, and kind of going through that process, so you can kind of see here overall, as I said, data coming in from the field lands into the um, PetroVault uh, we obtain, as we have connectors to OSDU, and particularly in this one in, which, in the Wellboard DDMS, uh, we go out and get the work, pro the work product component for the formation pressure test, taking the files plus the work product component, parsing the data out of the spreadsheets, and then turn around and pushing the content data back into the uh, Wellboard DDMS so that the process can continue with the formation pressure test application, which uh, Kay is gonna go ahead and cover. Uh, and I don't, it's just kind of overall so you can see the workflow from end to end and then I let Kay continue from this point. So next, um, we've been working very hard to actually take the, what is uh, the architecture diagram, which I will not go into in detail. You can see the Petrolink portion where the data is actually being populated directly into OSDU. And that's where we've tried to pick up and help. So the idea is to pull into OSDU, once it's in OSDU, to provide that information to end users in end user facing very easy to use applications so that they can perform the same basic workflows that they were using the spreadsheets for without having to make 400 replicas of the same master sheet. First is generating the schema, and we are working with the forum to end up donating the schema for the formation pressure tests. This is falling under the Wellbore DDMS, and in that context, we're adding a couple of endpoints so that the data can be read through. And also, because each formation pressure test is generating a separate work product component and content, um, combining those into a, combining all of the data into a single um, 
a single file so that at the end, it can easily be used for some of the analytics, analytics and so forth later. At the same time, and our main focus is really trying to provide something, tools for the end users that are OSDU native that can be used against this data, again, without having to have that replication. So there are really two basic sets. A web user interface that allows the um, SMEs and data managers to make any edits or manual additions that need to occur based on the other data that's flowing in. Maybe there's a formation pressure information that's coming in a little more quickly than those spreadsheets and needs to be manually entered so somebody can work on it immediately. But again, this goes directly into the OSDU schema from a web interface rather than hand typing into a spreadsheet. Um, on the other hand, also exposing the information through uh, Power BI to allow the additional analysis to occur. So whether you're creating um, the depletion charts or formation pressure charts, excess pressure charts, all of those being available and read directly from OSU. So in that context, there's no need to have that replication. Each user can begin with the templates and start to you know, generate their own plots based on um, the wells and areas that they're working on. So it really is native OSDU applications with an end user focus at this point. I think being able to add this back to I talk, speaking earlier, having the earlier talks about the business importance of having end user involvement and getting this into the hands of an end user, having a web interface that makes it easy to interact with the data, update, manage, delete, all of those things from a data management perspective, but also Power BI and putting the um, dashboards directly in an end user's hands so that they can begin to manipulate and perform the analysis on the data that is required of them. So, and now back to Jacob. Thank you, Kay. So there were a lot of challenges along the way. We don't have time to uh, dig it into all of those things. Um, but really, the takeaway is we don't have users manually loading data unless they need to fix something. The data goes straight from the vendors straight into OSDU, where, they, where we have an OSDU native application built on top of that. And so the next step then, of course, is to decide which which pieces of data are useful versus uh, which ones should not be used. And so um, EM Trust will be um, used for these data in order, to, uh, in order to set technical assurance on the analyses and, uh, and so forth. I'm not going to go too deeply into this because we gave a presentation on this previously, but trusted well data is absolutely the goal here. So finally, Curating and mastering data in OSDU um, with, um, with, um, with as the system of record for key subsurface data is really, really important to standardizing our workflows and to getting business value uh, for the practitioners in the business who need to do their jobs every day. Um, getting the data directly from the sources and from our partners and delivering it to our OSDU so that users can use it, so that we can share it on with other partners and so forth, is also the, the, the vision of the future. But now with this application, we can actually go ahead and do that. And finally, leveraging OSDU na native applications. Today, we have to build some of them, and this is the case where that is in the future. Um, we envision the, the applications that we currently use transitioning to, uh, to being OSDU native as well so that we don't have to, um, so that we can continue um, the workflows that we have in the tools that, we, that we're using today. But being able to, um, but having the OSDU platform allows us to be able to, to experiment in ways like this to understand how we want to change workflows based on um, new, new ways of treating the data and new ways of understanding the data. So OSDU gives us the opportunity to, to, to develop our own, to develop our own applications as, as needed. And then finally, data governance, um, as we mentioned a few times, is, um, is critically important. And the technical assurance that, um, that OSDU 
allows and enables through the metadata is um, a key part of our ability to perform these workflows and, uh, and, and to uh, realize all of the value that we expect from OSDU. So with that, I think I want to thank uh, Peter and I want to thank Kay for their parts in their slides and, and uh, in the presentation. And everyone who helped us work on this, especially the SMEs, some of them are here, some of them are still back in Houston. We really appreciate everyone's input and our ability to do this and so that the business can, um, can get value from OSDU. Any questions? I can barely see you guys. I know. <laughs> no questions. OK. Oh, yeah. One question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can, well, I can hear you, but no one else can. Just a simple question. I've seen that the end user is actually working with the data in the app. Yep. So he's not working on the OSCU data. So there will be still a synchronizing uh, element. In no. This. No, no. OK, no. Directly working on the OSDU data. OK, then I didn't yep. get it from And it is capturing all of the you know, versions and history okay. and lineage and everything along the way, which is the primary reason of working directly against the OSTU data. OK, so I misinterpreted this yeah. slide. Good question. Now, as I say, the only thing is that the, the incoming data from the field is the first manual step. But once it's there, it starts to automate the process to get to the formation pressure application. But even that is quite nice, just being able to go to the Petrolink website and just say, load this into our OSDU. It is manual in the sense you have to tell it to do it, and we may automate that at some point in Processing the future, so. right? But it's not a manual load in the traditional sense of going in and doing it. It's, it's really just one click. Or you won't use Postman. You do it through the app. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Makes it a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Question? Um, on the technical assurance, mm -hmm. You go inside the dedicated application in order to trust your data. Mm -hmm. Do you think to add directly the capability to trust it, uh, the data inside the application? Absolutely. I was hoping someone would ask that. So um, in this phase, in the MVP of the tool, the, you still have to go to another tool to do, the, to do the, um, the technical assurance. But we do envision the, the uh, technical assurance workflows. Um, actually being in the tools um, that, that the users are using. Now, it is a little complicated uh, because in order to do that, uh, say you might stamp as an SME or maybe as a da data custodian or something like that, the tool has to be aware of your data governance roles and responsibilities. It needs to be aware of um, any additional or custom workflows maybe that you put in the reference list for OSDU and, and anything like that. So there is a little bit of development and, and thought that, that um, the ISVs have to go through and they have to work with, uh, you know, work with uh, users like us in order to kind of understand what those workflows. And that's why we're doing EM Trust is to kind of show, um, you know, show software vendors and, and, uh, and partners and others how we envision that data governance working. So um, for this MVP, we don't have that functionality, but for, for, future, um, for future releases and indeed you know, any, any software that, that users use, that is our, our ultimate vision. So it's a good question. Any other questions? OK, another question. Oh, oh. there's three now. Thank you very much. Sorry to have to get you to walk all the way over here. Um, Tor Johannesson from Kongsberg. Uh, just a quick question. Um, initially, in the data flow, you have um, a, a file that is uploaded, and then it's kind of um, some work done on it automatically in the background, and it's uploaded to OSDU. Could you say something about how, um, I, I know you mentioned about trying to standardize the format for this information. Could you say something about um, uh, what you see as, um, let's say, risks or, or, or problems in terms of 
and other vendors using different formats for the same type of information initially when uploading the file to OSDU. And maybe a second follow-up question would be, where do you see the next steps um, from ExxonMobil uh, to, uh, let's say, implement this as a general production workflow? Thanks. I'll take the first question. Um, there's no standardization of the Excel spreadsheets. So the intent is that any spreadsheet could be uploaded based on the, you know, the vendors, uh, the wireline or LWD uh, vendor companies. So they can upload theirs. And then the intent is that the, the data is in the spreadsheet. We will scrape uh, or, or parse uh, each of the spreadsheets based on the, and which one we, we see. And do, you know, progression to do something obviously in a very automated fashion and who knows AI, but well, that's something to be, to be seen, worked on. And you, get a, you can follow yep. in the second one. Yeah, so, but also to, you know, for this particular data, uh, you know, that's, this workflow makes sense. We, there are other kinds of data and maybe even similar data like, um, like LWD data or, or last, I'm not sorry, for, or lab analyses, right? that we want those delivered directly to RSDU from the actual source of the data, right? So that is also another path that we'd like to see as much as possible so that there's not an intermediary. Um, but in some cases, you need that intermediary, and this is one case where, where you do. As far as what's next, it's exactly that, right? It's um, moving on to the well logs, to the, to the rocks and fluids, to the, nat to the um, lab analyses, so on and so forth, and get those delivered directly into OSDU, and then um, getting the applications that we use, that our specialists use, to read those data directly from OSDU and interact with it there. We don't want local copies. We don't want you to, I mean, you may need a cache in order, you know, for a save cache until, say, the working projects or, or whatever in OSDU gets matured enough, but, um, but ultimately we, we want people, even in the software, that specialists use going forward to be working directly on the data and to do their to do their job. And we'll just keep going through that workflow, one workflow at a time, until we've converted the entire business to realize the value from OSDU and trusted data. Okay. Okay, we have time for one more question. Yeah, nice example. Um, I think we've all suffered from a, a bad well log over the over time. Um, do you see this expanding to some of our bigger data, like velocity model or seismic volumes? Where do you see it going? Yeah, so we are working with other partners to get um, to get, for example, seismic data directly delivered into OSDU, um, and then um, we are working with some of our software vendors to get them more native on the, the, the seismic workflows as well, so that we're not, uh, so that we're directly interacting. Um, one of the things that we're doing with EM Trust is we are also, um, we are also building application, um, application extensions so that we can get the value of the metadata, the lineage, and so on and so forth from OSDU in the applications um, that we're using today. I'm not gonna name names, but if you wanna ask me later, maybe we can talk about it. And um, we, we want, even though we're stuck with some legacy applications for the time being, uh, we want to figure out you know, unique, innovative uh, ways to bring the value of OSDU into that in the most seamless way possible until we can get all the software caught up to, uh, to where we are in, in OSDU. So we're gonna keep developing in OSDU and uh, keep for pushing forward with that and bringing everyone along um, as quickly as, as we can. Did that answer your question? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you.